Greetings, Dr. Lavoie and coaches. Thanks so much for having me here today. My name is Diane Wies Bjornstahl. I'm a faculty member in the School of Kinesiology, but I'm also a volleyball coach, a softball coach, and have coached at collegiate and youth sport levels. The topic I'm here to talk with you about today are injuries, psychology, and the female athletes, and some things that I think you should know. And I'm calling this my chalk talk, hence the background. The first area that I'd like to talk a little bit about are what are some of the statistics on sports injuries related to female athletes. First of all, in terms of risk, across the lifespan, female athletes are less likely to be injured than male athletes at all points. Secondly, the same is true for treatments. When studies look at treatment room visits, medical visits, emergency room visits, female athletes across the lifespan have fewer treatment visits than male athletes. Third, in terms of injury rates, the injury rates overall in high school and collegiate sports for comparable sports for males and females are quite similar. And overall, the rates, if you collapse across all of the sports, they're higher for males in part because of the types of sports that they play and the types of sports that female athletes play. In terms of types of injuries, female athletes do seem to have higher rates of injury in ACL injuries and concussion injuries, but male athletes have higher rates of fractures, which we very rarely hear about. In terms of the Winter Olympics, which just started last night, I thought you might find it interesting to see that the highest risk sport in terms of injuries for female athletes is the snowboard cross and followed by bobsled aerial ski cross. So again, as you watch the Winter Olympics, you might think about that or perhaps you coach in one of these sports. So with that brief overview, here are some of the things I think coaches should know about occurrence. First of all, the facts about sports injuries. The news media would sometimes lead us to believe that females are much more vulnerable to sports injuries than males, and that really isn't true. Secondly, one of the things that's been looked at in terms of gender is the rep are the reporting rates and how those might affect injury statistics. And it uh, is unclear as of to date whether females are more likely to report sport injuries or not, even though many authors write about this. So there really is no strong evidence yet about that. Third, I think it's really important for coaches to know the major types of injuries, the risks, the rates in each of your own sports. So I'd encourage you to look up that information and become knowledgeable about that. And fourth, I really think it's the coach's job to make sure you create a climate in which you encourage rather than discourage injury reporting. Our second area that I want to touch on is, has to do with the vulnerability or the factors that contribute to the risk of injury for female athletes. In a big picture, there's this combination or intersection of biological, physical, psychological, and sociocultural factors that put an athlete at different levels of risk, so to speak, in situations and affect her behaviors, the choices that she makes, and so forth. I'm going to focus on the bottom two, psychological and sociocultural factors. From a psychological standpoint, in terms of personality, one of the predominant influences of, is a perfectionistic personality. So uh, that profile is particularly risky, especially for overuse types of injuries, but also for acute injuries. Secondly, we have found that a negative mood prior to heading into a season before injury in, is a risk factor for injury. And so that's something to be alert to and hopefully change and, and affect in the ways that you can as a coach. Third, life event stress has been shown to be a powerful influence on injury risk. Life event stress are those major and minor events or changes in your life or stressful situations that really negatively impact an athlete's risk of injury. However, with respect to item four, those athletes who have good re coping resources, both internal, such as mental toughness and mental skills, and external, such as social support and networks that they can go to, that uh, those seem to be um, mediators or to reduce the risk of injury even in a situation of high life event stress. So that gives us some tips about things to develop as a coach. From a sociocultural perspective, first thing I would like to touch on is the normative culture. There's a culture in sport that we all know about which encourages and rewards and, and lauds and acclaims athletes who play with injury, who push through injury and so forth. And obviously that's a very risky situation and there's a sort of cost benefits analysis that goes along with that and something that we need to think long and hard about whether it's a good situation for our athletes. A second sociocultural piece, so to speak, are the ways in which we all want others to see us. And so female athletes want others to see them as tough 
and able to do things and not giving in to quote unquote weakness or pain. And so we're really constantly manage, managing the impressions that others have of us. A third risk factor, if you will, is fair play. In situations with illegal play, the injury rates are significantly higher, especially for female athletes uh, in concussion injuries and head injuries. I saw in a study that showed in basketball and soccer high school that the injury rate was significantly higher in an illegal play situation. So obviously our implication is to keep the play fair. So in summary, what should you know about this area? I think that you should, as a coach, be very in tune with your athletes in terms of their mood and stress so that you can make adjustments in your training and so forth. Secondly, I think you need to plan for mental recovery in the same way that you plan for physical recovery. Third, athletes clearly want and will benefit from trusting relationships with you and so that they feel comfortable coming to you with some early signs of injury perhaps that could be headed off at the pass before it becomes something major. Number four, your job as a coach certainly is to enforce fair play and playing by the rules. And fifth is as a coach to create healthy normative climate surrounding reporting injuries and the comfort again that athletes feel in doing, doing that. Third area that I would like to touch on is how do female athletes react to sport injury from a psychosocial standpoint. In a big picture sense, the areas that we look at in terms of psychological responses have to do with cognitions or thoughts, affect or emotions, behaviors or the actions or the things that athletes actually do, and how those spiral to affect outcomes, which in turn affect future cognitions or appraisals about those outcomes and affects the athlete's responses to injury. So for example, in terms of thoughts, the appraisals that an athlete does about the injury situation, there are a wide variety of factors that have been looked at. Everything from their perceptions of stress, athletes disrespect or disregard the pain even though they are injured, they're thinking I'm just going to ignore it. They feel less or lower self-esteem when they're injured. They feel pressure and stigma from other players, from coaches, from parents, from media. They see injury as a weakness many times. They deny the injury. They see their feminine identities and the disfigurement that sometimes come with the scars or the black eyes as spoiling their identities. They have thoughts of loss in so many different areas that they have lost their goals, they have lost their opportunities and so forth. And on the other hand, on the good side, some in, uh, athletes see injury as a challenge and embrace it in the same way they do other sport challenges. From a feeling standpoint, there are a wide variety of feelings that have been documented in injured athletes. I think for female athletes in particular, these internalizing disorders of depression and anxiety are really prevalent. And so that's something to be very alert to in your female athletes. Fatigue is a big issue, I think, both pre and post. And we have found, particularly on the pre side, that experiencing fatigue is a risky situation for injury and on the post side it makes uh, can make athletes can be a sign of psychological issues can also just ha drag athletes down in so many ways they feel irritable they feel frustrated they feel angry especially if the injury was caused by a, a cheap shot something illegal they feel very fearful in many cases uh, fear of re-injury fear of not being able to do the rehab fear of not being the same athlete they were before some athletes sadly feel relief. I've particularly seen this in youth athletes where their parents are pressuring them to play and the only way out is to get injured. And so they, to them it's an actually an, a relief to be injured. There's also a silver lining on the positive side. I can think of studies and of athletes who certainly see the positives and, and see injury as a growth opportunity. From an action standpoint, some athletes, particularly those with the internalizing disorders, isolate themselves and, and really disengage and seem uninterested or apathetic toward the team, but really they're in, that's an indicator of some psychological struggles. Something that's really helpful is to allow athletes to share their stories, either in written form or a verbal form. Many athletes do give their full effort in a rehab situation and are doing quite well in sports injuries. As a matter of fact, I think the majority do quite well, and I think that's important for us to remember. On the other hand, some athletes skip rehab, they overuse pain medications, they do too much, which is a really common one. They do more, they think more is better, they do more training, more rehab, and so forth. And I also have many athletic trainers tell me that athletes will lie or deceive them as sort of the go-between bet between what the physician told them and what they conveyed to the coach because they just simply want to do more. 
So in summary, in terms of response, here are some suggestions that I have. You continue to apply the same mental skills to recovery. Uh, ask your athletes to do this just as they do use those mental skills for performance reasons. Number two, find ways to keep the athlete engaged with the team. Number three, let the athlete tell her story. Number four, let her know from your perspective as a coach that the injury does not change how you see her. She's very concerned about this, typically. And number five, don't rush her back if she's not already ready. So in summary, to pull this all together, what are some things that your coaches could do, you as coaches could do for your athletes? Three main areas I'd like to talk about. The first of these is competence. She really needs your help in regaining her sports skill and understanding her role and confidence about her role on the team. Things that you can do as a coach, have realistic expectations about what she can accomplish. Remember that that return to sport activity is a process, not a point in time. It takes place over time and even continues from a psychological standpoint well into their return. They still are struggling with some of the challenging thoughts and emotions. Number two, from a goal setting standpoint, think about short term process related goals rather than the big picture, focus on those small steps that can uh, document achievements each day. Help the athletes overcome her fears. So again, anything you can do to provide evidence of progress is really helpful. And clearly, I'm suggesting that you work closely with the medical providers, but there are things that coaches can do in this area as well. Build her confidence both in the sports skills and in her role on the team that you haven't displaced her or that you no longer are interested in keeping her involved or see her on the team. Number five, help her with any ways to keep physically active and fit. She's very concerned about her conditioning typically. And number six, clarify that her role on the team is valuable and will continue. Autonomy is a second area that I'd like to bring in terms of conclusion. And this means helping her understand her choices and her options and giving her some freedom of decision making. First, identify her motivations. Does she want to return to sport? Does she want to return that season? Does she plan to go back to a different sport or her next sport? Number two, personal decisions. Giving her some choices about ways to stay involved with the team, about the timeline in which she would like to um, embrace to come back. Number three, protect her from external pressure. I see parents, sadly, pressuring their young person to come back to sport in many cases sooner than the medical providers recommend because they're concerned about scholarships and so forth. So again, be a protector of her when, when the situation calls for it. And four, give her some choices in terms of how she might stay engaged with the team or activities that she might do. And the final area is relatedness. She definitely wants to stay connected to you and her teammates. We did a study of ACL injured adolescent females and the most powerful lesson I learned from that is that they want the social support and the engagement from their teammates and from their coaches. These can, this can be accomplished through the use of coping models, uh, showing others or connecting her with others who've coped with a similar injury situation. This can come with good relationships with medical providers, and hopefully she has these, but if you get a sense that she doesn't, perhaps you might have to intervene in some way just with a, a, a comment or a phone call or a question to the medical provider. Number three, she definitely, in almost all cases, wants to stay connected to the team and the peer, so find things she can do. I learned to officiate volleyball at a time when I was injured in college, and I really not only learned a valuable lesson, but stayed very connected to my team. Show that you care. I recently had a call from a coach, in uh, a parent in Ohio that was very concerned that uh, his young athlete was not receiving any sort of expression of concern from the coach. And he was calling me to find out if this was normal. This is not normal. They want your concern and finally they want your care. Thank you for your time.